Hello, everybody. This is Brian Terry with the Conservative Covered Call Group, and I wanted to share with you a, a success story in a leveraged covered call. I, I'm calling it a leveraged covered call as opposed to a leap, but um, anyway, it's the same trade. Just I like this name a little bit better because I think it more aptly describes the trade. Anyway, it was on TXN, and here's some information about the trade. So the the trade um, was again in TXN. And first I wanna just go over what the components, key components I think of a successful leap or leverage cover call. So you wanna make sure it's a good quality stock or an ETF and you wanna get into the trade on a pullback of some sort. So either it could be the overall market has pulled back or a really quality stock that moves down after earnings, particularly if the earnings and revenue were, were positive and favorable. So um, those are kind of what I look for to set up the trade. And the stock has to offer weekly options for me to take the trade. And there can't be any upcoming earnings at least uh, four to five weeks away. So that's kind of uh, what I'm looking for when I uh, look for a trade. So um, the mechanics, this is kind of, uh, I've covered this before, but we wanna buy a long call and we wanna select between the 30 and the 50 Delta strike. And that becomes our basically synthetic stock. And we wanna use expirations two to four months away. And I tend to like the monthly expirations when I'm buying the call. And then I begin to sell weekly calls against our long call, just like a covered call. And I generally look to sell between the 10 and the 15 Delta strike or a strike just above a resistance level. And then the plan is to just continue to uh, sell calls against our long call until we close out the trade. So here's a quick example of a, an actual trade that I did in TXN, Texas Instruments. So on July 22nd, Thursday, last Thursday, the stock gapped down 4.3% after announcing favorable earnings after the market closed on the 21st. So when I put the trade on, the stock was, was trading right at 184.96. And what I did is I bought the October 15th uh, 21 expiration, and I bought the 190 call, and I paid $5.33 per contract. And at the same time, I sold the July 30th 190 call and received 65 cents credit. So the net debit was 468, which would just be the 533 subtract the 65 cents. And here's a quick uh, chart of uh, the stock. So you can see here, this is where it gapped down after earnings. And again, the stock um, was a good stock. It had good earnings. So we put the trade on. So here's, you could just a perfect example. And then after the earnings, it, it moved back up. And so I guess the question is, well, what happened? So the stock, like you can see on the chart, moved up after earnings. And again, our basis in that trade was 468 per contract. So on 726, I was able to close the entire trade, both legs out for $6. So that was a 28.2% return on risk, which is the $6 divided by 468 in four calendar days. Two of those days were the weekend. So now if that stock hadn't hit a quick target, we could have continued to sell calls against that further reducing our basis in the stock. So this was an example of a really quick winning trade using the leverage covered call strategy. And I did wanna show you an example of a trade that takes a little longer. And this was a trade that I did in DIA, the Dow Jones ETF. So you can see here that on 513, I put the trade on and then I bought the 350. I went out to September and I paid $8.70. And then I wrote calls against it 
on the 13th, the 21st, the 1st, the, the 7th, the 14th, all the way through the 16th. And then I was able to close the trade out for $8.15 per contract. And it had reduced my basis down to 574. So that was a 41.98% return in about two months. So that's an example of a trade that takes a little longer to kind of get through. And so the takeaways is one, I love this strategy. I think it is a great defined risk trade. Um, it also gives us the opportunity to for a quick profit on a, on a pullback or on a dip, and we can use short calls to reduce the basis. So we can continue to um, sell calls against it and theoretically reduce the basis down to zero. Um, another takeaway, I wait for the dip or the pullback, and safer still is if you wait for that dip, and then you buy it on the first signs of a bullish reversal. Um, it's important to track all your credits so you know what your basis is. And then you wanna exit when you feel the recovery has started to abate. And, and again, one key thing is you wanna make sure that you watch uh, your short credits that they don't get in the money and get assigned. So I hope you found this helpful. And if, um, if you have any questions, you can reach out to me at conservativecoveredcalls at gmail.com, or you can check out our group, uh, the Conservative Covered Calls trading community. And again, I hope you have enjoyed this video. Thanks a lot. Talk to you soon. Bye.